Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag Monday. Yes, I'm inundated with packages. I've got no less than 19 packages. I think this might even be a record. So I only get through a few of them today. So sorry, I'm going to have to continue to do Mailbag every week until they're clear or they may never clear because people keep sending them in. Which is fantastic, so thank you very much. Because um, yes, it is everyone's favourite segment. Uh, it is one of my if not the most popular segment here on the EEV blog where I open my mail. So oh, I think uh, these are kind of newish, these are kind of oldish, so sorry if I uh, you sent them in first and you've seen it here in the last couple of mailbags and I haven't opened it, so let's get into it. Alright, first up we've got one from Richard Anderson, double S. Um, thank you very much, he's from Sweden, so hi to all my Swedish viewers, so let's check it out. Ah, uh, ooh. Mmm, mmm, I knew what's in here. Well, kind of. Uh, this is, um, I don't think there's any split in the top of this thing. So, no, no, I don't think there is. So, I'm just going to have to wield the knife all over the shop. There we go. Oh, look at that. Slices like butter. Oh, fantastic. So let's see what Richard has sent. He sent uh, a couple of postcards, one from uh, Stockholm, excellent, and one from, doesn't say, doesn't say. Oh, that's a lovely house. Is that Richard's house? I don't know. It's got a lovely flag out the front. So what do we got? We've got a note and, ta-da, mmm, vintage Keithley. Beauty. Dave, this Keithley multimeter was previously used in our polymetric materials testing lab. I work with high voltages and just a small electrical discharge of 30 kilovolts in close proximity to the DMM. You guessed it. You killed it. Ah, oh, unbelievable. Richard, what are you doing, mate? After a mishap, I measured the rectifying bridge but failed um, in an open state. Therefore, changed the diodes. Uh, and so it powers up, but some ranges behaved strangely the last time he tried it. I have no need for it since. Well, we have new instruments. Do I take... Do, can I fix the thing? Um, yeah, well, might be able to have a crack at it. Not in uh, a mailbag video, of course, but... Uh, Hey, let's open up. Thank you very much, Richard. And yes, I do know the difference between Sweden and Switzerland. Yeah, I goofed the Lindstrom side cutters. Sorry. Made in Sweden. I knew that. These are beautiful cutters, by the way. And here it is, the Keithley 177 microvolt DMM. It's not a bad uh, meter at all. You can uh, yeah, generally pick these up uh, quite cheap on eBay. Yeah, they're ancient, but yeah, they're not too bad at all. Check out this though 20 millivolt range and it's got a regular 200 volt range that's why they call it a microvolt uh one yeah it's not like you know five and a half or six and a half digits or anything but eh, you know still quite an accurate meter and the specs are on the bottom i love it when meters have specs on the back like this there you go it's not too bad 0.04 percent uh basic dc volts are 0.03 that's on the lower ranges are 0.03 percent up plus one digit by the way so yeah that's pretty good and um Unfortunately, it doesn't have a high input in impedance uh, mode, though, but yeah, it's still pretty good. Um, and down in the resistance, you know, we're talking 0.04% uh, down there, plus one digit. So, yeah, not too shabby. If you can pick one up real cheap, they can be a handy little bench meter. There we go. We pop the lid off, and that's what we get. By the way, the uh, tilting bale on these things is pretty dicky, so, you know, not something to write home about there, but... Uh, this is interesting. Check it out. The uh, the front panel uh, terminals, which do look like uh, tellurium copper, by the way, um, and they you know spared no expense there. Uh, look, they're just going directly over to one of the uh, protruding pins on the ganged switch mechanism. That's rather fascinating. Um, you know, I haven't seen that before. Usually they'll terminate into the board and then go over, but eh, some reason they've done that. I don't know. The great thing about this, look at this calibration instruction sheet, and which doubles as a shield in uh, plate on top. Follow the number sequences, look, and it tells you exactly what to do. Apply exactly, and then eh, 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 using the right tongue angle, of course, get in there and uh, tweak everything for your AC and uh, your DC modes. Fantastic. So, you know, really... Um, well, I'm not going to say really easy, but, you know, I mean, you don't even need to read the manual to calibrate this thing. Very nice, so... 
that just pops out of there. It's not even screwed on. Just how it in place. Very old school construction. Look at that. Looks like we have a... Oh, yep, Kadek. Yeah, no surprises, Kadak. They're one of the industry leaders in uh, uh, thick film resistor networks like this. This is the uh, you know a high voltage uh, ceramic divider uh, network. You know, really very stable. And there's our uh, four wire current shunt down in there. 0.1 ohms, uh, 0.1 percent. Thank you very much. Uh, that's not too bad at all. And there's you know a couple of other uh, precision resistors all around here in very different uh, shapes and sizes, and uh, Intersil, yeah, no surprise, ICL uh, 71, CO3, and, you know, 4069, look at that, oh, goodness. Anyway, um, this does date it to uh, 19th week, 1980, by the way, and, yep, look at the huge crystal in the thing, wow. That thing's a whopping 100 kilohertz, what a bobby dazzler. And you don't see these packages very often with the extended leads coming out the end of the molding like that. Ah, beautiful. Oops, ran out of room. We need some extra pins, but oh no, let's just use our standard size molding. And presumably that's a Dio bridge mod Richard's talking about. Well, crude but effective. Not one meg, thank you very much, but 1.005 meg, 0.5%. Thank you very much for the size of that beast. Houston, we have a problem. Well, that resistor that's had the absolute ass blowing out of it is uh, right on the output uh, terminals because, yeah, there we go. You can actually uh, get the output for this thing. So, yeah, uh, that's just <sighs> cactus. So it's not like it blew up on the input. So, yeah, go figure. Anyway, that may or may not be related to the actual uh, problem, but good place to start. Check out those multi turn trimmers. Aren't they beautiful? Look at that. So thank you very much, Richard. We can certainly have a crack at that because we can get the schematic. Uh, someone on the EV blog forum has actually uh, redrawn a crappy one from uh, Keithley. So yeah, we have got the schematic. It's annoying that you don't have the reference designators silkscreen printed on here. Um, you know, it's one of the disadvantages, but still should be easily repairable. Access is fantastic and stuff like that. Pretty much, uh, you know, commonly available uh, components. So yeah, we'll have a crack at that in a future video. Next up we have Portugal. Yes, I know all my Portuguese viewers. Uh, from Samuel Ferreira Marquez Lorenco. Absolutely pronouncing that incorrectly. My apologies. Uh, probably don't even... Yeah, I do need the knife a little bit. So, everyone likes the knife. No, sorry, I don't have a spoon. And let's uh, crack this sucker open and see what Samuel has sent. Uh, we have some uh, C code. Al Algarve. Algarve. Greetings from Portugal. And yet another postcard. Thank you very much. And something in some Ziploc bags. Let's take a look. And it turns out Samuel's had a second suck of the salve. He's the one who sent in the uh, Pixel into the mailbag some time ago. This is a new one called the Pick Tree. Uh, it's a Pick development board based on the 16F690 uh, mid-range Pick with 18 IO. Uh, one assembled and one pre-programmed, the other unassembled. So check it out if you want to uh, get the Pick Tree. I'll include the link in down below. And I should receive the solder paste stencil. I did. There it is. And this is from uh, Osh stencils there you go and yes um just like a mylar um sheet here so you know really cheap and easy people are giving away stencils these days and included a solder paste spreader as well which is just a credit card and yes you can just use any credit or other uh, plastic card makes a great solder paste uh spreader like that you whack the solder paste on and whoosh straight across and there's a stencil so even for doing tiny pitch work like this Hey, it's easily achievable by anyone when you've got one of these solder paste stencils. And there it is. There's not much to it at all. Just the in-circuit uh, serial programming header on here and uh, some headers to plug it into a breadboard. Too easy. And of course, that'd hook up to the Pick Kit uh, 3 or any other Pick programmer you care to mention. So thank you very much, Samuel. Link is down below if you want to check it out. Next up, yes, Yankee Land. You guessed it, uh, Max Scott from Cookville in TN, Tennessee, I think. Anyway, let's check it out. We don't need the knife for this one, I don't think. Because it could contain that uh, horrible stuff. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, don't want that. So, here we go. Oh, pff, yep. Oh, I hate that crap. I really do. Oh, man. 
What do we got? What's Max sent in? It is. Woohoo! A Commodore calculator! Beauty! Whoa, look at this. I've never seen, a, well, I've heard of, but I've never uh, physically had a Commodore brand. Yes, Commodore computers. They made calculators as well. G -E, uh, GL. Um, 987R model. Look at that. Uses a rechargeable electronic calculator. Um, unfortunately, uh, Max says that it, he picked it up at a uh, local uh, second-hand store. So thank you very much. Um, <laughs> serial number 15,025. So yeah, that could actually be, you know, the 15,000 unit made in the US of A. Beauty. Um, I'm going to have to get a uh, date code on this sucker, but uh, he doesn't know if it works, so we can power it up. Oh, yeah. Four function, of course. It's a four banger. You know, it's not scientific, but hey, it's a Commodore. So yes, before Commodore made, famously made uh, computers, they were in the uh, calculator business, the calculator wars of the 70s, of course. Everyone was involved in that, from uh, Mitz to uh, uh, Sinclair, Tandy, all the... Uh, all of those, and uh, Commodore were one of them, and uh, they all branched into uh, computers, of course, because it was a natural extension. Oh, it's got a... I'm going to have to break it apart. It's got a clip somewhere. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Crusty batteries, yeah, no wonder it doesn't work. Those rechargeables have seen better days. Mmm. Ah, uh, you canna beat the laws of chemistry, Captain. There's a front panel keypad and as to be expected ta-da look at the circuitry yes a big single chip uh, custom lsi there of course Ugh, those batteries are horrible but hey check out that vacuum fluorescent display there isn't that lovely i mean there's nothing else in here there is a main lsi chip which is the driver as well and there's a vacuum fluorescent display wow that's actually really something look at that i don't uh I think I've seen one of those before. I mean, you know, eight digit vacuum fluorescent display like that. Look at all the uh, all the wiring coming out of it. At one end, of course, sealed at the other end. There's the uh, there's the vacuum sealer where they uh, sealed it off and uh, um, sucked out all the air out of the sucker. And uh, well, that is that is a thing of beauty. Might have already used the term in this video already but that is a bobby dazzler folks it really is i love it gotta power this thing up it's alive yes pair it with that uh, 2.4 volts no problems whatsoever that is a beauty let's see if all the uh, segments work they certainly do ah oh, terrific well you know you'd expect it to still work although the display might have uh faded with time or something like that but it still looks pretty darn good it's drawing um 114 milliamps at uh, 2.4 volts and just for kicks i probed one of the lines on the uh, vacuum fluoro display and bingo that's what we get there we go we're at uh, five volts uh, per division so yeah it's pretty huge 5 10 15 20 25 you know, around about uh, 28 volts or uh, something like that at uh, 287 hertz. And there we go, you probe some of the other lines and uh, you play around with the uh, keys and you can see uh, see things all changing around as we put... My, I'm pressing the keys there, putting more on the display. Let's clear the display. There we go, and I'll put up all eights. Here we go. There we go. Bingo. Terrific stuff. And the really great thing is, is that they're doing that all in the one LSI chip. They're doing the uh, the vacuum fluoro driver, the high voltage uh, driving, everything in that one chip. Fantastic. So thank you very much, Max. That is just awesome. I love that. <laughs> oh, yes. Commodore calculators. Oh, who had one? Hands up. Come on, did you have a four banger or did you have the scientific one? By the way, that is the 49th week, 1974. Jeez. Next up, Jordan Ross from West Hills in California and time sensitive. Oops, sorry. I'm not sure if I missed it in the last video. Uh, postmarked August 11th. So it's August 30th today. So yeah, it's not that bad, I guess. But geez, yeah, sorry. I'll use the knife. Here we go. Da, 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 da. What's in it? 
what's in it that's difficult I should have just sliced it right open time sensitive we're gonna note and we've got some little metal things hmm. oops unfortunately I missed the deadline <laughs> sorry Jordan um, and well yeah maybe it would have helped because she didn't uh, unfortunately uh, Jordan didn't meet his uh, Kickstarter um, uh, goal so bummer sorry about that oops um yeah it's a sharpie holder at first i thought huh what's this and it rotates i thought what the hell's going on here what is this huh what does this do and then no it's obvious this actually breaks apart and yes i do use sharpies here in the lab uh, this is a mini um and yeah it just holds your sharpie and they're designed to just a magnetic like an adhesive uh metal back so yes i can actually use that here in the lab i can just there you go, whack that up there like that, and whack my sharpie in. That's actually quite handy. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Sorry I didn't get to you in time. And we've got another one here. This is from an Aussie, and it is from James from uh, Deniston here in New South Wales. It's just a stone's throw from here. G'day, James. And uh, let's, oh, it looks like it's been repaired by Australia Post. It's got the sticker on it. The uh, Ah, uh, yeah, horrid, hate these things. Uh, yeah, I should have done the zip and pull. I'm an idiot. Zip and pull, there we go. I have to clean up the lab again. Goodness. All right, let's have a look at what James has sent. Oh, it's big. It's electronic. It's got buttons. It's another calculator! Check this one out! CompuCorp, CompuCorp microcomputer! It's more, it's a microcomputer, it's not just a calculator! Beauty! Never heard of it, never seen it before! Oh! Hi Dave, I very much enjoy your channel and when I saw this in the skip at Sydney Uni, oh, tragic. I thought you might like to add it to your collection of old calculators. I do, thank you very much. It's a CompuCorp 322G programmable scientific calculator from the early 70s. Tried to power it up but it drew the right current. Unfortunately, that's all I could do. A interesting vintage teardown. Thanks for the vids. No worries. Thanks James for sending in. Oh, this is just beautiful. Look at that. A programmable scientific calculator. Oh, look at the keypad on this thing. It's just, it just oozes quality. It really does. Got indents on the keys and, oh, look at the pie symbol there. It, the feel is ugh, awful. Um, but look, run, load, 32G scientist. 322G scientist. Oh, degrees, radians, exchange key, exponent key. Oh, goodness. And on the back here, we have ourselves some uh, how to use instructions. There you go. Serial number for those playing along at home. It requires 7 volts at 1.3 amps. But uh, usage instructions. And then we've got power on off on the top here. There's the, uh, yep, there's the DC jack. And, yeah, CompuCorp, Computer Design Corporation, Los Angeles, California. Who can remember them? And check out this flip-up stand here. Wow, that just oozes quality. The spring in that, geez, it'll take your finger off. Unbelievable. Anyway, uh, CompuCorp Micro, um, well, CompuCorp uh, Computer Design Corporation, they made a whole bunch of stuff. Hang on, we've got an engraving. There we go, Sydney University Physics Department. Love it. Um, they made a whole range of calculators, banking calculators, bond trading calculators, and, uh, and programmable scientifics like this beauty here. Oh. And it gets even better. Watch this. Look at that. There's your battery compartment. Beautiful. And yes, it does run on rechargeable batteries. Gorgeous. And just like James, I tried to power this up and it was drawing about uh, 2.4 amps at uh, 7 volts. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that. That's with no battery uh, pack in there. So anyway, um, I think this is going to be a rather interesting teardown. So I'm not going to spoil this on the mailbag. I'm going to keep it for a teardown Tuesday. Thanks, James. Awesome.